What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today we are looking at the 11th episode of the 4th season, Calling All Cars. Now, the episode opens with Tony having a very strange and surreal dream. He dreams that he's in the car with Carmela driving, Ralph in the front, and Gloria in the back with him, who transforms into Svetlana at the end. Um, and he also sees a caterpillar on Ralph's head that transforms into a butterfly. He talks to Melfi about the dream, and she kind of probes him for the meaning of the dream, as she always does. She suggests that it means that he wants to get things squared with Carmela, all the things that happened with Gloria, Ralph, and Svetlana. But Tony rejects the interpretation, and he's really getting annoyed with therapy. It seems like it's always a case of, it might be this, it might be that, um, and he's not really seeing any real results anymore. Later on, he talks to her about the fact that Svetlana broke up with him, or in this case refused to go out with him, because she thought he was high maintenance and needy, um, and he really starts to blame the therapy for that. So he finally decides that he doesn't want to do therapy anymore, you know, he's not getting any real results out of it, and he decides to just leave once and for all for good. Uh, meanwhile, Bobby continues to visit and talk with his dead wife. Um, he even brings a cake to her on their anniversary and buries the cake at her grave. Janice, of course, you know, being interested in Bobby, wants him to move on from the wife and move on to her. So she's not happy with, you know, him continuing to go to the grave and visit, um, but she can't really say anything directly or else she's going to come off heartless and, you know, manipulative. Uh, the Boccalieri's go over to the Soprano house for dinner. Bobby Jr., you know, looks up to AJ, you know, really thinks he's cool and wants to hang out with him. But AJ, you know, being AJ, you know, doesn't want to have anything to do with Bobby. He just wants to hang out with his girlfriend. So when Carmela makes AJ, you know, entertain Bobby Jr. and Sophia, he decides to have fun and do the Ouija board and do the seance to contact their dead mother. And he pulls a prank where he, you know, turns off the lights and scares them with, you know, a wet sponge. And they leave the house, you know, terrified and thinking that they're haunted by a ghost. Janice uses this opportunity to scare the kids even more. She goes online on AOL and directs them to find a Ouija board that she hid in their house. Really, really despicable act. Uh, probably the lowest Janice has ever been, you know, scaring these two innocent kids in order to get closer to their dad. Um, but she uses it to make Bobby think that he's the problem. So he, Bobby thinks that because he's talking with Karen all the time, the kids think that they can contact Karen too. So he blames himself and decides that, you know, it's time to move on and it's time to stop, you know, feeling connected to his dead wife. And to kind of seal the deal, Janice basically forces him to, you know, eat the last ziti that Karen made. So this was kind of the last thing that he was holding on to for her. And now that's gone. And now Janice can move in there and take take over. Now, there's this interesting detail where in the last scene they have together, um, they're having dinner and they're having wine. And you can see the wine glass move. And it looks like, you know, it moved on its own that nothing, you know, caused it. And some people think that, you know, this might be Karen's ghost moving the wine glass. It does kind of connect with the theme of ghosts and the, the supernatural elements that we have going on in this episode with the dreams. Uh, but to be honest, it could also be Janice just moving the table mat underneath the wine glass. We don't see one of her hands, so she might be just moving it, you know, on her own. Can't say for certain either way, but some fans think that that is part of the supernatural elements of the Sopranos. Uh, meanwhile, New York wants 40% of Tony's HUD scam. They reiterate that because Zellman had a hand in it, they are entitled to some of the profit that Tony makes. Uh, when he refuses to give in to their demands, they decide to rough up his appraiser, and they threaten to start their own operation to compete with Tony's. Tony decides to reach out to Carmine's son, Little Carmine, who lives in Florida. He's not really involved in the New York affairs, um, but they're thinking that he might be able to negotiate on their behalf. Tony thinks that Paulie might be the link. He's starting to realize that, you know, it might be Paulie with all his grievances lately that's feeding information to Johnny Sack. So he actually refuses to, you know, tell Paulie about the trip or have him involved in any of their business. 
And we do see Johnny Sack talking to Pauly um, about this whole ordeal. And he even suggests that New York might take Tony out. And Pauly decides not to go against this, but he even offers himself as a replacement. He's like, you know, whoever's in charge, if it's me or whoever, you know, I'll always foster goodwill with New York. So we do see Pauly, you know, kind of betraying Tony in this case, and he isn't really trustworthy this season. Um, but Tony goes down to Florida, meets with little Carmine. Uh, this is the first time we're introduced to this character. I did a whole video about, you know, little Carmine and, you know, his motivations and everything like that. Go ahead and check that out. But little Carmine agrees to talk to his father and try to convince him to, you know, be reasonable in regards to the HUD demands. And the very last little scene that we have here, Tony has this very strange dream. He again sees Ralph for only a brief moment, but the rest of the dream is him as this Italian immigrant construction worker um, going to this very old-fashioned house to do a job, and he sees this shadowy woman in the doorway. Um, if you haven't seen my coma dream video, check that out. But I analyze you know, what this dream means in the larger context of The Sopranos. And I do think that the shadowy figure is his mother, and it kind of represents death and him heading closer and closer with each episode to that death. Um, but that is this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for the next Soprano Log coming soon. Thank you to all my patrons for allowing me to build a chateau that will even out show Versailles. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, Logan, and Clean.